good morning friends in the previous classes we have seen the introduction to the casting process and we have also seen the uh, classification of the casting process and the principle of the metal casting process is very simple whenever we want to manufacture a component a similar cavity has to be created in a sand mold sand mold or a medium compacted medium and we melt the metal and we pour into that cavity after solidification we break that sand medium then we get the solidified component this is the simple principle of the metal casting and we have seen that the metal casting process has been broadly classified into conventional molding process chemical sand molding process permanent molding process and finally the special casting process and in the previous class we have seen the conventional molding process and the uh, sub classifications in it they are the green sand molding dry sand molding and the flaskless molding coming to the chemical sand molding process we have seen the shell molding sodium silicate molding and no bake molding and we have seen that there is a permanent molding process where the mold is made up of a special steel so it will be permanent whereas in the case of the sand casting process once we make the mold once we pour the molten metal into the mold after solidification we break that mold and the mold is no more permanent here the mold is made up of a special steel and into that mold we create that uh, required cavity so these are also known as the dies so under that we have seen there are two types gravity die casting and the pressure die casting and in the gravity die casting the molten metal flows into the permanent metallic molds by means of the gravity whereas in the case of the pressure die casting the molten metal is injected into the cavity which is between these two metallic dies by means of an external pressure now let us see the special casting process under the special casting process we have the investment casting continuous casting vacuum sealed molding this is also known as v process next squeeze casting process centrifugal casting process plaster molding evaporative pattern casting ceramic shell molding slush casting and finally the stir casting first let us see the investment casting now this is the uh, what's a simple principle of the investment casting investment casting process means the pattern is made up of wax in the olden days uh, the ancient man when he wanted to manufacture the spear heads or the rudimentary tools he initially he made a wax pattern around the wax pattern he has compacted the sticking sand later he has heated that system and the wax has drained out inside there was a cavity into that cavity the molten metal was poured so this concept was used by the ancient man though new methods have been developed still this process is not outdated still we are using wax as the pattern material so in the investment casting wax is the pattern material of course the ancient man used the sticking sand uh, around to make the uh, mold whereas we use the modern ceramic slurry to create the mold what are there are different steps in the investment casting process first one is the pattern production for that there will be a wax injector will be there there will be wax bath will be there the molten wax will be inside that bath and from that bath the wax will be injected into the wax dies so these are the two dies so when we close inside there is a cavity into this cavity the molten wax will be injected and after some time the wax solidifies and the wax pattern will be taken out now to gain more production or to increase the rate of production what have what we do is we assemble a similar patterns like this maybe some 10 patterns or 8 patterns together and they are joined by a central tree or this also acts as the sprue central tree so this is the pattern assembly the next step is we prepare a ceramic slurry 
a thick ceramic slurry we prepare and we give the ceramic slurry coating means this assembly will be dipped into the ceramic slurry we take it outside and we sprinkle the stucco around that and we dry it again we will dip the pattern inside the ceramic slurry take it out and what say apply the stucco and you dry it likewise up the application of the uh, ceramic slurry coating and the stucco and the drying will be done in a cycle maybe 7 8 times after applying the ceramic slurry and stucco for 7 8 times there will be a thick shell around the wax patterns then it will be baked then what happens it will become hard and before that it will be there will be a process called de-waxing process means uh, all the wax which is inside this uh, ceramic shell will be melted and it will be drained out like this here we see the de-waxing and in the next stage this is the casting casting means pouring of the molten metal into the cavity so we melt the metal separately and we are pouring here the molten metal goes inside the uh, cavity initially it goes into this uh, central tree that is the sprue then it goes horizontally and it fills all the cavities and after some time the molten metal solidifies after solidification we break this uh, shell the ceramic shell this operation is known as knockout now initially we have assembled so we have taken some 8 10 uh, patterns and we have assembled them now we need to separate them so here we are cutting the individual casting from the central tree here we are cutting so this is known as the cutoff next actually the components produced by the investment casting have a very smooth surface finish but still a final finish is required here we do the final finishing and also if painting is required we do the painting so this is the final stage of the investment casting process so these are the advantages of the investment casting process we get the very excellent surface finish whereas in the case of the green sand molding uh, the mold is made up of the sand the uh, what say the cavity surface is made by the sand because of the sand grains there will be some irregularities will be there because of that the cavity will have a irregular surface even the casting will develop a irregular surface but here we get a very excellent surface finish this is the, the this is the advantage great advantage of the investment casting process next one very complex details can be made so this uh, method is also used in the uh, jewelry castings so we can see the jewelry castings there will be very complex design will be there it is very difficult to manufacture this kind of complex design by any other casting methods but using investment casting this is very easier next one very thin sections can be obtained as thin as 0.75 mm we can make next one close dimensional accuracy you can see the uh, dimensional accuracy it will be 0 0.08 mm to 0.1 mm this is this is the dimensional tolerance we can obtain by the investment casting process next one complex shapes can be made next one uh, no or negligent finishing operation sometimes no finishing is required maybe few times a little finishing is required now what's the problem in the sand casting process we make the casting and yes we break the mold and when we take the casting outside there will be rough surface on the casting so to get a very good surface finish we have to machine and we have to spend several hours on the machines to obtain the very good surface finish but whereas here in the investment casting process no machining is required sometimes and sometimes a little machining is required next one castings are free from the usual defects in the case of the sand castings if the uh, moisture is more there will be some gas defects will be there sometimes this sand will be sticking to the castings so these kind of defects will not arise in the case of the investment casting and these are the limitations of the investment casting process production of wax patterns make the process costly wax is costly 
there are again different wax are there some cheaper wax are there some costlier wax are there most of the times so we make uh, blends of these waxes to obtain better properties so that way these uh, pattern uh, waxes are costly and the processes becomes costlier next one large castings cannot be made whereas in the case of the sand casting process a very small casting can be made a medium size casting can be made and even a very large casting can be made as large as uh, about 5 tons casting can be made by sand casting process but here very large castings cannot be made and the process is relatively slow why it is slow because we are making the wax patterns then we have to assemble them then what we will do we will make the ceramic slurry this ceramic slurry uh, preparation itself takes uh, several hours of time then we have to dip the assembly into the ceramic slurry take it outside apply the stucco coating then you dry it again dip it in, inside the ceramic slurry apply the stucco dry it like this this cycle has to be done some 7 8 times each uh, time we have to spend at least 1 hour for dipping into the slurry and applying the stucco and drying likewise this uh, ceramic shell preparation takes 7 to 8 hours and incorporating the cores is difficult so these are the limitations of the investment casting process these are the typical applications jewelry castings can be made by investment casting art castings can be made difficult to machine alloys can be made by investment casting process milling cutters and other tools impellers and other pump components and finally it is used in the dentistry and surgical implants the artificial teeth are manufactured by the investment casting so we can see here these are the jewelry items so these are manufactured by investment casting and here we can see these are all the jewelry components some time back we have uh, talked about a central tree so this is that uh, central tree or the sprue and through this they are pouring the molten metal and so these are all the individual castings of course finally they will separate all these individual castings so these jewelry uh, items are manufactured by investment casting and here we can see this is a steam turbine blade which is used in a thermal power plant you can see this is the turbine blade it's a very huge turbine blade and you can see these are all the blades these are all the blades and all these blades are manufactured by investment casting because these blades will have a very complex uh, geometry and if you manufacture it by any other method they require the machining and it is very difficult to machine such a complex geometry that's why these are manufactured by investment casting process and here you can see this is a milling cutter this milling cutter is made up of a difficult to machine alloy most of the times it contains a large amount of tungsten and it is very difficult to machine this kind of steel now this milling cutter is manufactured by investment casting so here we can see this is an art casting now you see its uh, complex uh, features if you make this by any other casting process it will have a rough surface once there is a rough surface we need to machine it now it is not possible to machine this under a machine but when you make this using the investment casting process then we already we get a very smooth surface so there is no need to machine it so investment casting is also used in the art castings next one let us see the continuous casting process so this is the typical setup of the continuous casting and here you can see this is the molten steel and this in between there is intermediate reservoir is there this is known as the tundish tundish and here we can see there is a die and the molten metal from the ladle it flows into the tundish and from the tundish it is flowing through the die then what happens and here initially there is a slab is there solid slab and this uh, solid slab or the stopper will be here at the beginning and the molten metal flows and it flows through the die and immediately there will be cooling system will be there and because of the cooling system and it solidifies and it falls on the stopper 
and the stopper slowly comes down and it slowly comes down and it goes like this and even the solidified billet it comes like this and after it comes to a particular distance it will be cut at an inter equal distances or at intermediate distances it will be cut so this is the simple principle of the continuous casting and here we can see the horizontal continuous casting here we can see this is the holding furnace and this is melt means the molten metal and this is the uh, mold and the molten metal is going out and here we can see the cooling system is there and because of the cooling system and it solidifies and here we can see these are the rollers and these rollers they take the solidified casting away from the furnace and the solidified casting goes in this direction and here the mold is made by a what's a graphite mold it is commonly used to manufacture non ferrous uh, components non ferrous castings these are the advantages of the continuous casting process we get the 100% casting yield first of all what is meant by casting yield suppose in by if you make a casting by green sand uh, molding suppose if the weight of the casting is 100 kg we pour more than 100 kg of the molten metal because uh, the molten metal occupies into the uh, sprue and also into the riser so if we want to make a casting of 100 kg about 125 kg of molten metal we we pour into the cavity so that way in in such a case the yield will be 70 to 80% and here the yield is 100% that is a benefit next one cheaper to produce ingots so we uh, most of the times we produce the ingots by continuous casting and we get a better surface finish and grain structure can be regulated as soon as it enters into the mold there will be a cooling system because of this rapid cooling the grain structure will be improved the process is automatic it's a mechanized system that's why it requires less labor and here we can see these are all the aluminum ingots manufactured by continuous casting and here we can see these are these are the gear blanks this is a gear blank this was manufactured by continuous casting means inside there is a mold even the cross section of the mold was similar to the gear blank profile and this is the as cast material afterwards it was machined and after machining we got the gear like this so gears are also manufactured by continuous casting next one the vacuum sealed molding process this is also known as v process and this was recently developed in japan what is the principle of the vacuum sealed molding here we use vacuum to bind the or to hold the molding sand whereas in the case of the green sand molding we used to mix some binders and place moisture so that some binding action will be developed within the molding sand and such a sand we what's the place inside the molding box and when we compact yes we get a molding cavity and here we won't use the or say clay or any binder even the moisture we won't use we use a fine and dry sand and here we use vacuum to hold the sand so here we can see here is a platen here is a platen and this is the pattern this is the pattern and here you can see a green colored one so that is a polymer film so what we do is so on the board we place the pattern and here we put the polymer film and here we seal it and here also we seal it now we apply vacuum here when we apply vacuum what happens the vacuum sucks the polymer film so because of that the polymer film will be strictly adhering to the pattern surface now what is this yes uh, now we place a molding box on this board in the molding box uh, we place the now you, we place the molding sand here here we can see here we place the molding sand after placing the molding sand the excess sand will be removed 
now again we can see here let us come here here again we can see a uh, green colored one so we place a again a polymer sheet here and you seal it here you seal it here and here there is another vacuum pump is there and here we apply the vacuum then what happens uh, the vacuum sucks the polymer film because of that it goes uh, what's a closer to the pattern and the sand here will be tightly sticking to the pattern it will not be shaking now what we do afterwards the, the uh, remember that we have used the two vacuum sources one to what say this one in the initial stage to make the polymer film adhere to the pattern surface and another polymer film we have kept on the sand and again here we have applied the vacuum the first vacuum we release when we release the first vacuum what happens the pattern will be coming out of the mold now we can see here this is the mold and here it is closed by the polymer film and here it is also closed by the polymer film and the vacuum is tightly holding the molding sand so that is how we made the one uh, what say half of the molding boxes or one molding box or the drag box again in the same way we make the coke box also then we uh, assemble these two together and of course when we make the coke box there will be a provision for pouring the molten metal then we pour the molten metal the molten metal goes inside the cavity and it solidifies after it solidifies then in the case of the sand casting we have to break it and we have to apply external pressure for the knockout purpose but here just we have to release the vacuum when we release the vacuum automatically the sand will be falling down and we get the solidified casting so here we can see this is a vacuum molding machine used in the v process and here we can see a vacuum is used and yes we can see the polymer film so these are the advantages of the vacuum sealed molding process one is the simplified sand control in the case of the green sand molding we have to add the binder we have to add the additives we have to mix the moisture then we have to mix it thoroughly this takes time and uh, very carefully these ingredients have to be controlled if the moisture is more there will be a problem if there is a binder is more there is a problem if the mixing time is not proper is not sufficient again there will be a problem but here there is no question of mixing additives to the sand we take the fine and dry clear sand there is no question of preparation of the sand that way there is a simplified sand control next one no sand reclamation reclamation means when it is about to be spoiled we take it and we see that it is again used so such a case arises in the case of the sand molding so part of the sand will become useless or when it is the whole thing is becoming useless we put efforts and see that most of the sand will be reuse so that operation or that process is known as the reclamation so here the question of reclamation doesn't arise the moment you release the vacuum automatically the whole sand falls down and we get the casting the sand as yes, it is we can use it again for the making the next casting so uh, the third is the no sand mixing is required next one the inexpensive patterns patterns are not expensive no draft or other pattern allowances in the case of the sand molding process that uh, what's a pattern will have a taper so that it will be withdrawn from the mold here a uh, later that taper has to be machined here no such a taper or draft need to be given so means afterwards we don't have to put efforts to remove that taper on the machines next one reduce noise level in the case of the sand molding process to prepare while we are making the preparing the sand there will be a noise and here there is no question of such noise and when we are compacting the sand in the case of the sand molding there will be a noise here there is no such noise so here there is a reduce noise level next one better general environment 
in the case of the sand casting process we mix the clay and when you after solidification when we break this sand a dust will be rising here such such problem doesn't arise next one reduced cleaning costs in the case of the sand casting process because we are mixing the clay water and other additives the sand casting will have a dirty what's a uh, what's a film around that this has to be cleaned in the case of the v process such a uh, question doesn't arise the casting will be very clean next one reduce smoke and fumes whereas in the case of the sand casting process when we pour the molten metal into the cavity yes there is moisture in the mold because of the moisture immediately the moisture will turn into vapor and the vapor will be coming out so that causes some kind of uh, what's a inconvenience to the operators so here such question doesn't arise next one no knockout process what is this knockout in the case of the uh, sand casting process after we pour the molten metal after solidification is over we have to break it we have to put the physical efforts or we use the machines to break the sand so this is known as the knockout here we that question doesn't arise next one better finish on the castings next one better dimensional accuracy we obtain in the v process next one finally the less energy consumption so these are the advantages of the vacuum sealed molding process next let us see the limitation limitations of the vacuum sealed molding in this process the skilled workers are required because the vacuum has to be applied in the right time and also it should be applied for the right duration so this requires skill next one the polymer film is expensive and for each casting we have to use new polymer film once we use polymer film for one casting so that is uh, that cannot be used for the next casting so that way the process becomes expensive next let us see the squeeze casting process so this is the simple principle of the squeeze casting process in the squeeze casting process we get the mechanical properties better mechanical properties and here we can see this is a mold this is the mold right and uh, here the molten metal is coming it is ready and yes the molten metal is poured into the die so this is the die or the permanent metallic mold and this is the you can see this is the ram and this is the ram will be coming down you can see here so the ram is pushing downwards and the molten metal is trapped between in fact here we have shown a very simple uh, what's a geometry so, sometimes the uh, casting will have a complex geometry and very thin fins uh, what's a complex fins will be there and the, in the ordinary casting process it the metal may not flow into these complex details but because uh, when the metal is still in the liquid state we are applying external pressure by means of this ram so uh, all these thin fins complex films will be filled by the molten metal after solidification what we do yes uh, this uh, ram comes up and the solidified casting will be ejected like this so this is the simple principle of the uh, squeeze casting process it's a well known fact that uh, we get met better mechanical properties with the forging why because we apply the mechanical pressure the grain structure will be improved the same thing happens here so this is a, a kind of uh, mixture of casting and the forging process so these are the advantages of the squeeze casting process parts of fine details can be produced as i already told because we are applying the external pressure right the molten metal fills the fine details and the complex details without any difficulty next one shrinkage defects are very less shrinkage means internal hollow cavities inside or externally when we are applying the mechanical pressure externally so this uh, what's a possibility of uh, creation of these internal or external cavities will be minimized next one very high production rates close to 
die casting next one no gating and razor and hence higher casting yield here we don't see any sprue or any or uh, razor or runner that's why we get the higher casting yield it produces the high quality surfaces the qu surface will have a very uh, what's a smooth surface there will be a smooth surface rapid solidification results in a fine grain size which improves mechanical properties because we are pouring the molten metal into a metallic die and there will be a cooling system because of that there will be rapid solidification uh, because of the rapid solidification the mechanical properties will be improved the amount of pressure applied is significantly less compared to forging yes uh, by forging we get the better mechanical properties but the amount of force that we apply is considerably very high but here we have to apply very moderate pressure and we get the better mechanical properties these are the limitations of the squeeze casting process not suitable for the large castings because uh, the molds are made up of the special dies metallic dies so uh, very large castings cannot be made not suitable for the ferrous castings because the metallic dies are made up of ferrous alloys so it can be used only for the non ferrous castings and here we can see the typical what say components produced by the squeeze casting process and this is the squeeze cast knuckle of an automotive so this is manufactured by squeeze casting process and here we can see there is another component squeeze cast rack and pinion housing for truck application so this is manufactured by squeeze casting process next let us see the centrifugal casting process there are three types of uh, process in the centrifugal casting one is the true centrifugal casting semi centrifugal casting and the third one is the centrifuging so this is the centrifugal uh, true centrifugal casting what is its principle there will be a graphite cylindrical mold will be there so this is the cylindrical graphite mold the one which is looking in the gray color so this will be uh, what say supported on the wheels bottom rollers here you can see these are the rollers in fact the rollers will be there on the top also and uh, as the motor here we can see a motor as the motor is rotating the rollers will be rotating this roller and this roller and because of that this cylindrical graphite mold will be rotating when this cylindrical graphite mold is rotating and here the molten metal slowly is poured into the graphite mold and gradually the speed of the mold will be increased and the molten metal keeps on coming inside then what will happen because of the centrifugal force the molten metal will be sticking on to the walls of the graphite mold and the rotation continues till it solidifies till the molten metal is solidified once the molten metal is solidified the rotation of the cylindrical graphite mold will be stopped then this can be separated into two halves then we can get the casting outside because we are applying the centrifugal force on the molten metal so this is known as the centrifugal casting process and there is another type semi centrifugal casting process in the semi centrifugal casting process uh, the system rotates on a vertical axis whereas in the case of the true centrifugal casting process the mold was rotating on a horizontal axis and here the mold rotates around a vertical axis right so this is the mold cavity the mold cavity is here and this is the mold and you can see this is the cope and this is the drag yes and the molten metal is poured like this and the molten metal flows like this and it flows like this and uh, then the uh, what say mold will be rotating the mold will be rotating now what is the benefit because in the case of the conventional sand casting process suppose if the cavity has a small a uh, fine feature the molten metal may not flow into that but here of course uh, such a small fine feature is not shown here but then what happens because it is rotating because of the centrifugal force the molten metal will be forced to 
occupy such small details those that is the benefit of this semi centrifugal casting process and the third type is the centrifuging and they are centrifuging in the centrifuging also the system rotates about a vertical axis so here we can see this is the axis of the system and this whole system rotates now what is this so these are all the individual castings so this need not be cylindrical this can be any casting one thing is they have a fine features they have fine features or small complex features uh, by conventional casting process it may be difficult for us to fill the mold metal into those fine features but now uh, what is happening is this is the central tree or the central sprue and all these castings are all these molds are connected to the central sprue and the system rotates as it is rotating once we pour the molten metal because of the centrifugal force even if there is a small feature a fine feature molten metal will be flowing into those fine and small features so that's the benefit of the centrifuging so there is a difference between the centrifuging and uh, what say semi centrifugal casting right here we make one casting whereas we make so many castings here this that is the centrifuging these are the advantages of the centrifugal casting formation of hollow cavities in the cylinders uh, without pores if we have to make uh, uh, what say internal cavities in a casting we have to use pores again these pores uh, what are these pores uh, we will be studying in the uh, next uh, lecture uh, non metallic and slag inclusions and gas bubbles are forced to the inner surface so even if these uh, what say non metallic slags and impurities if they are there in the molten metal they will be forced to the inner surface of the casting because the centrifugal force falling on them will be lesser so they will be collected at the center of the casting or on the inner surface of the casting uh, we can remove them very easily next one here also no gating system that's why the casting yield is very high next one fettling costs are reduced next one casting is free of shrinkage cavities and porosities shrinkage means uh, hollow cavities inside the casting are on the surface of the casting so these will be minimized porosity means gas bubbles inside the casting are on the surface of the casting so this problem also comes down fine outside details can be successfully cast fine outside details uh, it may be difficult for us if it is the conventional sand casting process but here because we are applying the centrifugal force the molten metal because of the centrifugal force flows into the fine details next one it is easy to inspect the castings so these are the demerits of the centrifugal casting process more segregation of alloy component during pouring under the force of the rotation suppose sometimes we pour uh, the alloys the alloys contains the different metals and uh, suppose if one metal's density is more and if one metal's density is very less the centrifugal force falling on these two metals will be different because of that the individual metallic components of this alloy may be segregated which is uh, not required which is uh, detrimental to the quality of the casting next one shortable only for axial uh, symmetrical components so this is applicable for the uh, what say true centrifugal casting and the semi centrifugal casting next one skilled workers are required for the operation say the mold has to be rotated in the right time and it should be rotated at the optimum speed and it should be stopped at the right time so this needs skill so that's why skilled workers are required for this operation and next one uh, we get the inaccurate internal diameter if the two halves of the mold are not what say coupled properly at such times we get the inaccurate internal diameter so these are the typical components produced by the true centrifugal casting process we can see so these are all the components produced by the true centrifugal casting process next one let us see the plaster molding process in the plaster molding process uh, we use the plaster of paris so initially we have to prepare the plaster of paris so this is also known as the gypsum commercially so this will be mixed with water and we prepare a 
what's a slurry? Plaster of Paris or the gypsum slurry we prepare in a container. And we, yes, we place the pattern here. So, this is the pattern and we pour the, uh, what's a plaster of slurry here around about the pattern. And after some time, the plaster of Paris slurry will be solidified. After it is solidified, we remove the pattern. In the same way, we prepare the other half of the pattern also. At such time, we also make a provision for the what says sprue or the pouring cup so that the molten metal can be poured. And when we prepare both the halves of the patterns, we assemble them. Yes, we are assembling here. So, this is the drag. So, this is this part, this deep blue colored one is made by the plaster of Paris. And you can see here, this is also made by plaster of Paris. And these two will be assembled. Now, the molten metal will be poured into this uh, assembly. And after solidification, we break this uh, plaster and we get the solidified casting. These are the advantages of the plaster molding process. Complex shapes can be cast, offers excellent surface finish. What is the mold made up of? It is not the green sand mold, it is made up of plaster of Paris. The plaster of Paris will have a very smooth surface and because of that, even the component, cast component will have a very good surface finish and that is why minimum machining is required. Fine details can be obtained because of this process. Next one, thin sections can also be obtained and we get good dimensional tolerance. Setting of mold takes less time, less than 15 minutes time. So, these are the advantages of the plaster molding process. These are the demerits of the plaster molding process, not suitable for ferrous castings. The sulphur, the gypsum contains sulphur. This sulphur reacts with iron and results in defects. That is why this process cannot be used for making ferrous castings. This is more expensive than sand castings. In the case of the sand casting process, we use the molding sand. We take the fine sand, mix with the binder and the additives and the moisture, oh, you mix it. And the same sand can be used for making several castings. Whereas here, once we make a what is a plaster mold that can be used only for making one casting. Afterwards, one, we have to break it and that the plaster cannot be used again. That way, it is more expensive than the sand casting process. Not suitable for large castings. This can be used for making small castings and also uh, to some extent medium size castings. Say, um, up maybe uh, 30 grams to 7 kg. Beyond that, it is not possible to make the castings with the plaster molding casting process. Next one, the plaster is not reusable like the uh, sand in the sand casting process. No, it is not reusable. Next one, it has to be baked. After the plaster is set around the pattern, it has to be baked. So, for that we have to use an electrical furnace and also that consumes time, means production time is increasing. Thermal conductivity of the plaster is poor, whereas the thermal conductivity of the sand medium is very high. Here, the sand molding medium is the plaster of Paris, its thermal conductivity is poor, that is how the solidification takes lot of time. As the solidification is taking lot of time, the mechanical properties that are likely to be obtained will be poor. Next one, low permeability. What is this permeability? Ability of the what's a what's a mold to allow the hot gases to pass through that. Whereas it is if it is the sand casting process, there will be what's a between the neighboring sand grains, there will be some gaps will be there. Through these gaps, the hot gases pass through the sand mold. Whereas in the case of the plaster mold, so the, the such uh, what's a pores will be very less. That's why there will be low permeability. What happens if there is a low permeability? The hot gases that are developed inside will be accumulated inside the mold cavity. So, that results in the casting defects. Friends, today we have seen 
uh, few uh, special casting process we have seen the uh, what's the investment casting process continuous casting process vacuum sealed molding squeeze casting process centrifugal casting and the plaster molding process and in the next lecture we will see the evaporative pattern casting ceramic shell molding slush casting stir casting and also the economics and the overview of the and overall comparison of all this process we will see in the next class thank you